growing up, we didn't have anybody to look at. I wanted my community, the youth, to connect with the mainstream through the game of basketball. The first few years, it was only like 30, 40 brown people, and I was the only one with a turban, and everybody thought that I'm getting a free ticket because I'm an Indian. Yeah! Oh! Hi everyone, this is Silas Ram, AsianCultureVulture.com. How are you doing? I'm with the amazing Nav Bhatia, who is the subject of a documentary called Superfan, the Nav Bhatia story. Nav, um, welcome to AsianCultureVulture.com. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Thank you for having me on. No, it's a pleasure. It's a real honor, actually, to have somebody like you uh, on this channel and talking about this film. So tell us uh, a little bit about your journey with basketball. How did you get into the game? Well, I migrated to this beautiful country, Canada, in 1984 after the riots in Derry. So uh, keeping, uh, I was very uh, blessed to be uh, accepted by Canada. And uh, but uh, uh, so, you know, I, I, I came and finding a job was a very difficult with a turban and beard. Yeah. My mechanical engineering degree didn't mean nothing to anybody. Yeah. Nobody wanted to hire an engineer with a, a beard and turban. Um, so, you know, I mean, uh, I, I don't think my looks helped me at that time either. I was such a good looking guy, I thought, and nobody yeah. <laughs> I had a good degree. Very good I, guy. I, I had a good degree and I had a degree, but nobody I think wanted. Yeah. So I did odd jobs. Like I, I became a janitor, I became a landscaper, I painted the walls. So I did whatever it has sure. to do yes. in yes. order to make my ends meet because I rented a basement for $340. Right. And you know, we Sikhs are very proud people. We don't do this. We have to earn and we believe in the Absolutely. dignity of labor yeah. to do anything what we had to do. So yeah. moving forward, I ended up in a in a car dealership as a salesman. And on the very first day, I had a, you know, people calling me names, towel head, oh, underwear yeah. head, all those things. But you know what? It didn't stop me. I got encouraged. I said, I, now you got to be better than good if you want to survive. And that's what I did. And I always believe, let your number speak for your speak for yourself, sure. for you, you know, for you. Let the numbers speak for you. And I did. I did 127 cars, sold 127 cars in three months, which was a record then. It still is a record. So, you know, from there I became a manager, general manager. And then in 95, I was comfortable. I used to watch basketball on television on right. U in, on USA, on American channels. Yeah. And I fell in love. I bought two tickets to when the Raptors came in 95. And, you know, Moving forward, 26 years later, I've not missed a single Raptors game. Sure. It's an amazing statistic that you've been to every single match, uh, yeah. every single game. But um, when you started, it wasn't a big, I mean, basketball wasn't a big sport in, in Canada. And uh, You're right. Yes, um, you're right. It was very, it was a new sports because ice hockey is the sports national sport here. Yeah. So, you know, uh, but now it has become very popular. We, are, we have a lot of uh, immigrants, you know, like the, it is a very diversified crowd in the arena. Like we have a couple of thousand South Asians. We have Muslims, Hindus, hijabs, turbans everywhere. And, uh, you know, I believe that uh, uh, we have done a good job. I think I, I, I don't want to give myself a credit but i'm going to uh, give myself a credit for 20 years we used to bring people from muslim peoples hindu peoples black people everybody yeah. to the game the kids so yeah. that everybody is watching the game together and yeah. cheering for their beloved raptors was it like that at the beginning did i mean a lot of people just just um because it's a very new sport and you found that um some obviously new communities are uh ready to give it a try like you did in some ways very well in the beginning, like first few years, it was only like 30, 40 brown people. And I was the only one with a turban and everybody thought that I'm getting a free ticket because I'm an Indian. I'm getting a free ticket from the bank or somewhere. Yeah, and yeah. I let them feel that way. I let them feel that way that I'm getting the uh, ticket, a complimentary ticket from the bank or anything. But no, I've never gotten a complimentary ticket for 26 years. I've spent like, the money. I had two at the time. Now I have 13 tickets and I, I spent more than I make on the game of basketball. <laughs> Right, right. And how your your passion for the game and your passion for the team. Sometimes you were you like heckle the opposition. I found that very fascinating. The team's such a like a friendly guy, but then you're you're like you're being yeah, I get I get to there under their skin, you know, I know how to do it with a decent way. I don't pick on their personally. Hey, 
but yeah. I know what to tell them. And the referees know, referees know that I am uh, doing yeah. it. I'm tackling them, but in a decent way. Right. And everybody knows the opposing team. Every player knows. Right. And, uh, you know, so you most of, most of the time the players come and they say, hey, don't heckle me today, please. Okay. So we are all friends. For 48 minutes, I heckle them. But before the game and after the game, we are brothers. So, I mean, that early part must have been, when you think back about, that journey of the actual team. It's an incredible journey when you started as a new franchise and ending up winning the NBA in 2019. That's a fantastic journey just as a fan. So, you know, to, to tell us a little bit about that, that oh, journey. I, I think it is. It is very parallel to my... Uh... You know, a very parallel to my story also, because the Raptors were not that fair, you know, uh, yeah. they were new. Yeah. And then we win the championship. Then uh, this turban guy becomes the grand marshal of the parade. Then yeah. this turban guy oh, gets the yeah. ring, you know, yeah. the championship yeah. ring, you know. Yeah. I get the championship ring. And then first time somebody getting a championship ring. Not a player. Yeah. Yeah. Then yeah. first yeah. time on the top of that to be in the Hall of Fame. Right. So this is just... Uh, this is, I mean, you can't dream of it. It's just no. ridiculous. It's just strictly blessings of the Almighty. If somebody had said to you back then in 95, this is where it will end up in, in 219, what, 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 what do you think your reaction would be? <laughs> I would say that this guy is, I would say this guy is uh, on drugs. <laughs> you know, he's smoking something. You know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, you know, I mean, who would dream? Who would yeah. say that? How did the film come about? But the film came about because uh, I have a manager, Rinku Ghai, you know, and he's the one six, seven years ago, right. you know, when I was uh, seven years ago, he came to me. He says, hey, you are known in the, with the fans, love you and everything. And, uh, you know, what do you want to do with your life as a super fan and all that? And I was OK at the time. I was popular, but not the way it is now. Right. Uh, so I said, look, I want to reach out to the kids, underprivileged kids. I want to make sure I want to bring the world together because I've seen a lot of speed bumps. I've seen all that with yeah. the racial things. Yeah. I said, I want to bring everybody together. Yeah. And uh, and that's what I said. He said, OK, let me do it. And we had a plan. And he gave me a plan, which was a five-year plan. And uh, believe right. it or not, right. 20, right. 2014, we were talking. And 2019, the, the right. championship came. Now you are a kind of a brand in yourself. And it becomes very slightly commercial. I don't know what, how you feel about that. Well, I, I, you know what? We try not to make it a commercial. You know, uh, I have five car dealerships. Yeah. I never advertise my car dealerships right. around me. Superfan is a separate thing, which only is handled by Rinku Ghai. He does everything. And then three years ago, he, he, I think he was approached by some people to make a movie. He had, I think he had an idea about it. But believe me, I didn't see them. He didn't share with me. Yes, I did some interviews for the, the movie and all that. Yeah. But I didn't see the movie Till the movie was complete at a premiere. I saw the movie in Vancouver. And there's, there's going to be a fictional film with, with Cal Penn. Is, is that, is yeah. that, that's also quite incredible. Yeah, yeah. A, there's, a, there's a Hollywood. Uh, and, uh, and last week, we just signed a book deal with Penguin wow. Books. Oh, wow. Congratulations. So, yeah, yeah. Rinku just informed me that he has signed a deal with Penguin Books. So it's all amazing. Good things are happening. And believe me, everything which is happening, we are going to give it back to the community right. and uh, build basketball courts, help the, you know, my other passion yeah. is to build uh, washrooms in India where right. the right. girls are going to school, oh, but there's no yeah. washrooms and they drop out of the school when their period starts. So, you know, we are going to do, uh, we are continuing that. We have made already over 400 by washrooms wow. and we're going to continue these two things, making basketball coats and making washrooms. Thank you so much, Nav. I look forward Thank to you very much. And this great success story that is Nav Bhatia. There's fans and then there's a super fan.